our children. Amen. Bless you. Bless the parents and others that have brought, grandparents that have brought their, their little ones to the Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of Yeshua, we thank you for these children. Bless them as they go to Shabbat school. May you uh, just encourage them in your word and in their love for you and your love for them. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. admiring 
Isn't that interesting, all the things that he does, his attributes, considering his ways? But imagine to take it that step further, to not just consider who he is, but actually think, he calls me to be like him, to do those things that he does within the sphere of influence that I have. In Ephesians 4, just the chapter before, verse 13, we are told that we are growing up to a mature, perfect man, to the full measure of the stature of the fullness of Yeshua. Yeshua is our Redeemer. He is our example. He is our teacher. He said, whatsoever I have commanded you, that you take as, a, as part of the gospel, whatever things I have commanded you. We are to forgive one another, even as God, through Messiah, forgave you. Do not hold anything against anyone, because that's not God-like. God forgave us freely. Yeshua said, freely you have received, freely give. We are to imitate. We are to go after the things that God has given us, has shown us. Isn't it wonderful that we have this example? Yeshua, our Redeemer, by His blood, we are children of God, and now be imitators of all that He has shown us. We could, you know, sometimes people think, well, I, I, I do something for God if I can do something maybe great for God. <laughs> but we forget the little things. We forget the small things. The little individual things of each and every day. And yet we are to imitate Him in all things. We are to shine in compassion. Shine in love. Shine in our charity. In our, the way that we love. Walk in love. Hallelujah. Amen. Shine in the way that you love one another. What was it that the world saw about the Christians, about the believers? Behold how they love one another. So shine. Let your love so shine. Amen. In your light. And we are to shine in our conduct. And we'll begin with verses 3 and 4. And this will go for... Uh, uh, a little bit here. But sexual immorality and any impurity or greed, don't even let these be mentioned among you as is proper for the holy ones. Obscene course and stupid talk are also out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Replace, displace, we talked about displacement last week. Displace all these things with thanksgiving. If we are being thankful, we are not doing all these other things. All of, the, all of the things that Paul is here. The theme isn't avoid. The theme is don't do. It's fitting for the saints to do what is right. Even greed and covetousness. And Paul says that that is idolatry. But rather the giving of thanks. We are to be thankful for all the gifts that God has given us. Hallelujah. Continuing on with the conduct. Know for certain that no immoral, indecent, or greedy person who is really an idol worshiper at heart has any inheritance in the kingdom of Messiah God. Verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's judgment comes on the children of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partners with them. Our inheritance is with God. We are joint heirs with who? With Yeshua, joint heirs with Yeshua, that perfect, spotless Lamb of God. And here we are, not idolaters going after the things of this world, going after all the things that, that, are, that pertain to this carnal life, but we go after the things that belong to God. We are not partakers with these other things, but we love God. For we have passed from darkness to light. And if we pass from darkness to light, we're shining as examples. Verses 8 to 12, For once you were darkness, but now in union with the Lord you are light. Walk as children of light. 
For the fruit of light is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them, for it is disgraceful even to mention the things that are done by them in secret. It's interesting, Paul said, Paul doesn't say, for once you were in darkness. He actually says, for once you were darkness. We were part of the kingdom of this world, the darkness of uh, Satan's kingdom himself. But once we were darkness, but now in the union with the Lord, we are what? We are light. What did Yeshua call us? You are lights in this world. Hallelujah. We are no longer walking in trespasses and sins, but we are walking in light and goodness and righteousness and truth. Not having any fellowship with darkness whatsoever. Hallelujah. We are shining as lights. Yeshua ascended above all, far above all, far above all. Yeshua the crucified, far above all. Lo at his footstool, adoring we fall. God has exalted him far above all. And there we are as well, walking in his light. Hallelujah. And verses 13 and 14, as we think of this in our conduct, we shine. Yet everything exposed by the light is being made visible, for everything made visible is light. This is why it says, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead. The Messiah will shine on you. Is Messiah shining on you today? All things, you know, it's wonderful that light, where light comes, the shadows flee. Light dispels darkness. And the darkness, light has come into the world, and the darkness has not what? Comprehended it, overcome it. Hallelujah. The light of God has come and has shone within our hearts. Hallelujah. No more unfruitful works of darkness. But we have awakened. We have risen from the dead. Our participation in the light of God shows that we are members together in the resurrection of Yeshua. He has made us alive together in Messiah. Hallelujah. We are people not of the night, but of the what? Day. We are people of the day. We, You know, when Paul talks about the coming of the Lord, he talks about the thief in the night. But you are not of the night. You are of the day. That this should not overtake you. Uh, unawares. Let's wake up. What can people do in their sleep? Unawares. Snore. Snore, okay. They can snore. At least they're breathing. <laughs> what else can they do in their sleep unawares? What's that? Dream. They can talk. They can dream. They can, they can sleepwalk. Remind you of anybody? No. <laughs> they can even sing. They can think. How many, how many of you have been sleeping and have thought, I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping, I'm thinking. <laughs> I know I'm sleeping, but why do I know I'm sleeping? <laughs> oh yes, all these things. But we are to be people that are awake, wide awake. Not asleep, not sleepwalking through this life, but rather awake as lights in this dark, dark world. Because so many people are just sleepwalking and sleep talking through this life, how we need to be careful that we are true witnesses. Verses 15 to 17, so, play, so pay close attention to how you walk. Remember Ephesians 4? Walk worthy of your vocation, wherewith you are called. Now we're to walk worthy of the light in which we walk. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Make the most of your time, because the days are evil. For this reason, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Pay attention to how you walk. In the King James, I think it says, walk circumspectly. When you think about walking circumspectly, did you know that, especially when you think about a cat, you think about a pussy cat, um, that the, when the cat puts down its front paws, where do, do its back paws go? Where, 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 what path does its back paws follow from its front paws? 
So the very same place. So wherever they put the front paw, the back paw will go to that same place. Why? Because the cat is walking <laughs> circumspectly. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> okay. And how are we to walk? Circumspectly. Placing each foot carefully. Well, be careful, little feet, where you go. Amen? We are not to walk as fools. We are not to become like madmen. We are not to be going after the idols of this world. What does it mean to redeem the time? Is it that time is to be just, well, we've got to watch, watch our time, we've got to make sure that, that you know, the time itself is to be used? People will walk through time. People will move through time. Did you know that time will happen with or without you? <laughs> time is happening now. Is that what it means to redeem the time? Or to redeem the things we are doing in and with that time? Redeeming that time. There is a portion of time. A portion of time in each day. A portion of time in each activity. A portion of time in each life, in each generation. How do we use our time? Making the most of every moment, making the most of every opportunity, seizing the day, seizing the opportunity. For who? For what? For Him, for the glory of God. Hallelujah. And this is how we should walk, because we are shining as lights in the day. The sun shines, and we see that wonderful light that's given to us every day provided the clouds don't cover, but the sun is still shining, even when the clouds cover. But because these days are evil, it's so important that we walk wisely, walk in wisdom. Yeshua told us that many false prophets would arise and deceive many. There would be many, much lawlessness will abound, and the love of many will grow cold. For such a time as this, Mordecai, told Esther, you have been born for such a time as this. Understanding the times in which we live. We may shake our head, we may wonder, how can this be? Well, how can we, how can we shine as lights when so much corruption and everything else is happening in this world, all the negativity, all the wars and rumors of wars, and the movements of armies and nations, and then we are to shine as lights each and every day, shining in compassion and love, shining in our conduct, in whatever we do, wherever we go, however we move through this time and space, to shine in our conduct. And then even shining in courts. The scripture talks about making melody in our hearts to the Lord. Isn't it wonderful that we can just, have you, have you ever had a song just start in your heart? And you just realize that, God is moving in our hearts to sing. Hallelujah. Singing in the spirit and with understanding. Walking in the light means constantly being filled with the spirit. For this reason, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, for that is recklessness. Instead, be filled with the Ruach. There's a contrast here. There's a contrast between being filled with what the world wants to give us and all the things that it offers and be constantly, be ye being filled with the Holy Spirit. There is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. There is a time that we, that we come as redeemed people. And we, we say we're going to lay it all on the altar as a living sacrifice. And we're not going to crawl off the altar. <laughs> we're going to be that living sacrifice for God. And there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit and with fire. But did you know that in, in the book of Acts, if you read that, you will find that, and they were filled with the Spirit. And then a few, another chapter or two later, and they were filled with the Spirit. And then another chapter or two later, and they were filled with the Spirit. Be ye being filled with the Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You have the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you can do these things. You can be the imitators of God. You have the Holy Spirit so that you can be lights in this world. You have the Holy Spirit so that you can do the things that God has called you to do. You have the Holy Spirit so you can choose what is better, what is best, ever, only, all for thee. Hallelujah. 
and this spirit-filled life. It is marked with a change in the way we, we operate, in, in the way that we conduct ourselves, but it's also marked with worship and gratitude. And he says in verses 19 and 20, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Yeshua the Messiah. It was just a few weeks ago I told you this story about the, uh, it was a, a meeting with several churches involved, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Mennonite, Baptist, and the Pentecostal fellow was getting a little agitated because he wanted to shout, praise the Lord. Remember this story? And he, he asked his neighbor, when do we get to praise the Lord? And the neighbor said, on page 10. <laughs> but we get to praise the Lord at all times. We speak to one another in songs and hymns. Have you ever given a scripture to one another? To say, you know, the Lord is speaking to my heart and giving a scripture. Sometimes we want to tell other people what to do, what to think. But maybe we should, you know, focus on the scriptures that we could give them and the words from the Bible itself. Psalms. The book of Psalms. Did you know that there's a hymn book in your Bible? It's called the book of Psalms. And there were tunes, you know, uh, uh, by the sons of, of Korah and so on. The, the tunes were given and instructions for the song leader. Some of the psalms begin. And the hymns. The great hymns. Go back to the hymns. Especially the ones that are teaching hymns. Five bleeding wounds he bears. Received on Calvary. They pour effectual prayers. They strongly plead for me. Forgive him. Oh forgive they cry. Nor let that ransomed sinner die. Find that hymn. Find those other hymns. Watts and Wesley, and so on. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the melodies just well up within your heart. Because when you do, you're shining. There was one in a Catholic church, and the true story in a Catholic church, there was a priest that encouraged his people, would you please sing like Protestants? <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> oh, we could, oh, to have that. Shining in the chorus of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Giving thanks, always. And then shining in community. And this is the rest of the chapter. How do we shine with one another? How do we shine in our own homes? Verse 21. Also submit yourselves to one another out of reverence for Messiah. Submitting ourselves one to another when we're filled with the spirit when we are walking in love when our conduct reflects the character of god there will be submitting one to another in our form of government here in canada we divided authority and power there is the head of state that has the authority there's the head of government that exercises the power and there should be, there should be a submission there. Power is lent to the head of government, to the prime minister. Power is lent to him. He doesn't contain it himself. It is lent to him. It is lent to him by the people of this nation. And he needs to remember that, that he is the prime minister, the first what? Servant. Submitting one another. In the army, you have generals and brigadier generals and colonels and majors and captains and sergeants and privates. And one rank submits to another. And even the generals and the five-star generals submit to the commander-in-chief. There is the ranking in the army. Remember the centurion that came to Yeshua and whose servant was sick? And Yeshua said, I'll come to your house. And what did the centurion say? You don't have to do that. Because I am what? I am a man of authority and I understand be what it means to be under authority. I say to someone, go, and he goes. I say to someone, come, and he comes. And he says, I understand authority. Just speak the word. Submitting one to another. 
There needs to be this order. Even in the Godhead, there is order. There is a full equality, full eternity, full attributes of the whole Godhead, and yet Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there's order. Just because there's order and submission does not negate equality. And that's important as we come to the next section. And as we think about this, verse 22, wives to your own husbands as to the Lord. I like that translation because that's literally what it says, wives to your own husbands as to the Lord. Some translations say wives submit, but it's wives to your own husbands. Submit one to another, that's the word submit, and then wives to your own husbands. It doesn't say women to all men. It says wives to your own husbands. Keep it in the family. Hallelujah. And here we have this, this act of submission. It's authority. In the family there are, you know, there's times that husbands and wives need to speak to each other, hopefully often, and to discuss what is it that we should do concerning a certain action or a certain uh, purchase or whatever. And there is advice given back and forth. But then finally, a decision has to be made. And hopefully, there can become an agreement and a decision made. But sometimes, where there isn't, then there is a decision made. And that decision could be wrong. But that dis the decision maker takes the responsibility for that. So there we have that order within the home, wives to their own husbands. There was a dean of women at Prairie College, Mrs. Cunningham, in fact one of the dormitories that was named after her, a Scottish lady, and she would have the, the gals come for tea, and she would ask them this question, why did you come to Bible school? And one of them said, to find a husband. And she said, why would you want one of those? <laughs> uh, she, wa she wanted to, to have those, those uh, ladies out in the mission field as single missionary gals. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Betty Lou, if you ever ran into Mrs. Cunningham or not. <laughs> no. <laughs> there we go. Got to watch, watch my stories here. There's, there's witnesses. <laughs> For, in verse, look at verse 23 now. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Messiah also is head of his community. Himself the Savior, the Deliverer, the Redeemer of the body. But as Messiah's community is submitted to Messiah, so also the wives of their husbands in everything. Messiah, the head of the body. When you think about your own, your own being, your own body, there is the head. But when you're up in the night and you don't, don't turn on the light because you don't want to disturb anybody, what happens often when you're up in the night stumbling around? What do you hit? Yeah, or your big toe or your little toe. Your head gives its full attention to the pain you're suffering and cares about that toe more than it cares about itself. Oh, it hurts. The what the wife being the part of the body, the head being Messiah, husband, following Yeshua's example. How we need to look at this carefully and consider it when we see this. Yeshua, the Savior, the deliverer, the preserver, the provider for the body. And this is the what's given for the husbands. Verses 28 and 29. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church, does the community. The husband taking care of his family, of his wife, in these scriptures, sometimes people have gotten the wrong idea. That and there was I knew of a fellow that he would 
he would create ridiculous, menial, stupid, <laughs> dumb tasks for his wife to do. I'm going to teach her submission. That was his excuse. Uh, what, you know, pardon, what an idiot. But <laughs> how, how, how stupid that is. That, that is totally missing the point. Mm -hmm. That is missing the point that in all things there is order. This is what the scripture is talking about. Order in all things and how we need to do that. Yeshua submitted to his own parents. Citizens submit to the government as long as what? The government does not go against God's word. The community of Messiah submits to Yeshua. Servants submit to masters. Children submit to their parents. Mm -hmm. There is a relationship. We are called to this service together. Mm -hmm. And we need to remember that God encourages us in these relationships because Yeshua gave himself for the community of believers. Mm -hmm. What did Yeshua do? for us in, re in this relationship. And how are husbands to love their wives? Mm -hmm. They're to love their wives as Messiah loved the church. What did Messiah do for us? He gave everything for us. Let this be true in our lives. Husbands, love your wives. It's not just compassion, not just emotion but a true agape love, a sacrificial love, an actual giving of ourselves in love. So that's what we need to do, this, the example of God's love through us. Husbands, love your wives just as Messiah also loved his community and gave himself up for her. God gave away the store for us. God invested everything in us, and this is how it should be in our homes. Messiah did this so that he might present to himself his glorious community, not having stain or wrinkle or any such thing. And I want to tell you something about the scripture. Not having stain or wrinkle. Who is the one that is to make sure that his bride does not have stain or wrinkle? He will present himself, his church, without stain or wrinkle. On that wedding day. Yes, we should conduct ourselves well. Yes, we should uh, continue to work toward that day. But it is God who will present you without stain or wrinkle. Don't get into the flesh. Don't think, well, I'm going to do this myself. Don't get into self-righteousness. Oh, I'm going to make this happen myself. Remember, it's God that works in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. It is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. If you, if you, as a head of your home, say, well, I'm the head, so I'm going to give the orders. I'm the head, so I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm the head, so I'm going to make your life miserable. You've missed the point entirely. That is not biblical. That is not true. You care one for another. You love one another. You make sure that life is good one for the other. Not considering your own needs, but the needs of who? Of the other. That he might present us as a glorious body of believers. Yeshua shares with us in all things, in our suffering, in our experiences. He knows our weaknesses, but he also knows who and what he wants to make of us. And he's given himself for us. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we shine. We shine in our compassion, our love, walk in love. We shine in our conduct. Be imitators of God. Be holy as I am holy. We shine even in chorus of rapture as we sing to the praise of God. And we shine in our community, and that includes within the home. Submitting one to another. And in the order that God has given us, we shine because He shines. This week will be ascension on the 40th day of the counting of the Omar. Yeshua ascended. And He ascends into heaven itself. 
and he shines. Yeshua shines brightly. And he ascend, when he ascended, <laughs> the Bible says that he took many captives captive in his train. And he took all of those that had been waiting in abeyance in paradise, and he took them to his very home in heaven. And that's where he prepares, he goes to prepare a place for us. That where he is, there you may be also. And he shines. You know, Daniel, when Daniel talks about the great resurrection, and the resurrection of God's people, the last, one of the last verses in Daniel, and the righteous what, will shine like the stars in the heavens. Hallelujah. Amen. So shine. Shine as Yeshua shines. Amen. Amen.
I think that's one of your favorite songs. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> My comment is the inside is very short. It's often a choice. I have a little card that I put in front of me every day in the bedroom in the living room, and it says, I trust in joy. So it's often, it's a choice whether you feel like it or not. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes, Gabriel. When, when I think about the night, I always think about the illustration that one of the teachers did to us once. He turned off the lights and lit the candle. He said, when is the light the brightest? When it's dark. Mm -hmm. And now that the world is getting darker, it seems quite a minute. And the, the light is also becoming brighter. And there is the separation happening. And I also heard another thing that what is God is all about separating and not mixing. Mm -hmm. And what is great, great is when you mix darkness with light. <coughs> but he wants us to be the light. He wants us to be caught a cold, not no, no, no yeah. mixing. Yeah. We have to choose the side and now the light is becoming I think just as we see how dark the darkness is, the opposite is also hopefully true for mm -hmm. people that they will see the light. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. It's good to be in the place of the Lord and to walk circumspectly, walking on purpose, walking so that everything counts, every word counts, every step counts, every everything we do, every 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 moment of every day, and it seems so daunting, but it's bit by bit. And when you plug into the source, we know that God shines his light through us. When we think about electricity in our own homes, it's dark until we flip on the switch. It's just easy, just flip it on. But how much easier is it to bring ourselves to the point of walking on purpose, making sure that everything we do is on purpose? It's not, it's not fly by the seat of our pants. It's not to, to be whimsical and think that, oh, tomorrow, manana. Uh, it's not to, to embrace um, a lackadaisio uh, spirit in the sense that, oh, I'm too tired now, or oh, I gotta eat now. No, mm -hmm. it's in every breath you take. You take it on purpose. Now, when you are in a place where you're having lung problems, it becomes very apparent that you need air. That you have to make yourself expand those lungs and take in that air. And I think today was a very incredible. You don't have to make yourself shine because once that once that light is inside of you once you connect yourself with the source once you make a decision to walk on purpose you will find that there will become a yearning for the things of god that will turn your light bulb so incredibly tight that there is nothing but rays of sunshine. <laughs> you were saying that if you knock your toe and chat with an explicit yes. Well, my husband died nine years ago and I'm quite alone. So when I knock my toe, I scream and nobody hears. <laughs> <laughs> we walk in the light as he is in the light. Anyone else? Yes, Jack. 
Yeah, you can even you ask uh, the lady spoke that seek first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and then all things will come. Mm -hmm. The righteousness and uh, the passage with Sai like in, uh, in John 15 uh, the branch got to be connected with the vine. Mm -hmm. And it's from there that we get our strength and that's where we uh, we cannot help it. If we get filled enough, it will come bubbling out of us mm -hmm. without making an effort. I think it, it, mm -hmm. it's an automatic thing. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we are so filled with what Jesus has to offer us. Mm -hmm. And in particular, what you mentioned, the Holy Spirit, he said, wait mm -hmm. till you receive the Holy yeah. Spirit. And uh, it's in His power that we have power. <coughs> the apple tree produces. <laughs> the pear tree produces. Pears. And the pears and the apples don't think, I've got to be a pear. I've got to be an apple. <laughs> the tree produces its fruit. Amen. Heather, you look. I'm entertained. Oh, you're, you're just entertained. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Uh, anyone else? Praise God. Well, amen. I'm going to call upon our brother Neil to come and bring the blessing. Let us stand.
Peace of Jesus.